we good. I mean, you just saw that footage. I completely fricked up my back. I've been on them prescriptions, on them pills. I've been trying to get my back all good again so I could go snowboarding. And luckily there's nothing wrong with the bones, it's just really sore. I'm pretty bummed out about it, but this gives me a perfect opportunity to make a video because these videos where I sit down and talk, they require a little bit of effort. And most of the time when I have free time, I just like going snowboarding. When I'm sitting on the couch doing nothing, it's fun to research core snowboarding, to research snowboarding, seeing what's going on in general. It's a way that I still get to be involved in snowboarding without actually physically being able to snowboard. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down core snowboarding, explaining what are the chorus brands what are some kooky brands? Uh, what does it mean to be a kook? What does it mean to be a core snowboarder? And where are these different items and philosophies align on this very arbitrary model that I made up? Core snowboarding has a lot of definitions. Let me get into the definition of core that I will be using for this video. When I say core, I'm really thinking of like center, like the earth's core or, you know, the center of an onion. And then there's like layers outside of that. If you were to remove anything within the core, all of the other layers would cease to exist. They would never have occurred. The term core in general is kind of stupid, so don't get butt hurt if I call out a brand that you wear or if I if I don't categorize these brands in the right in the right place. Okay? It, it's a it's a silly YouTube video. It's for fun, guys. So when I say core, think of it as the fundamental building blocks that everything that we have in snowboarding is based upon. In order to understand what core snowboarding is, you kind of got to go back to the history. The first snowboard, or the first somewhat of a snowboard, was called the snurfboard, and it was invented in the 60s. People tried it out, people liked it, people thought it was fun. The very fact of just standing on a board and going down snow is fun. This is the core uh, the most core philosophy of snowboarding. Nothing that we have in snowboarding would exist if snowboarding was boring, if it wasn't entertaining. So snowboarding being fun is what invented snowboard companies. It's what gave us the movies that we all like. It's what gave us the tricks that we all like. That sounds so like fun and inclusive. Like, yay, snowboarding is fun. That's the core. That's the center of snowboarding. But it, it is true. We all snowboard because it is fun. Snowboarding being fun is what gives the first two snowboard companies to rise into power. Those two companies are Sims and Burton. Now Sims is created on the fact that Tom Sims had a skateboarding and surfing background and he wanted an activity that he can do in the winter time. So he brought all the cool surfing and skating aesthetic into snowboarding. Burton wanted snowboarding to be accepted by skiers. He wanted it to be like skiing, but simply on a different transportation device, I guess. Which isn't as core as Sims philosophies, but early Burton and early Sims, their competition with each other just skyrocketed snowboarding. It's the reason why we all snowboard today. If you were to remove early Sims or early Burton, we wouldn't have snowboarding as we know it. Now you can argue today that modern Burton isn't core, but early Burton is the core foundation of snowboarding. <laughs> snowboarding being a sport isn't core at all, but it's not kooky. It's not like the worst thing in the world. Even if you're a core snowboarder, you're most likely competing against yourself and you're competing against your friends or you're at least pushing yourself to be better there is a competitive nature within snowboarding especially if you're trying to progress snowboarding movies the first snowboarding movies that are similar to what we see today came out in the 80s and these first movies were all about powder and dropping cliffs and we still have a lot of movies about people doing jumps landing into powder getting nice turns dropping massive cliffs backcountry lines this is a very core tenant of snowboarding. The first film that I can find that was a powder film is called Apocalypse Snow, Le Film. It's a, it's a French film. It was made in 1983. We have very fundamental and core parts of snowboarding here. You got a guy 
just ripping untouched European POW. That looks so much fun. It's what we all strive for when we snowboard. It is very core. And making it into a movie and making it art is also fundamental to core snowboarding. Ten years later, you have movies like this come out. Snowboarding is a lot more aggressive. This is the movie Creatures of Habit 2. Uh, and this is all, you know, like half pipe riding, pow riding, and dropping gnarly cliffs. I thrive on competition, but what I don't thrive on is all the politics. You have a little bit of like jibbing and whatnot, but at this time, jibbing is still slightly frowned upon. The jibbers as a group of squeaky voice kids whose balls haven't dropped with tent-like trousers and insanely wide stances. Boom! Get roasted, J.P. Walker. Uh, <laughs> like, this article says in 1997, J.P. Walker brought Jim into the mainstream. He made riding rails cool and whatnot. And that's all on his part, simple pleasures. So J.P. Walker does, like, insane big air riding, just going absolutely massive into POW. Uh, that, that's a cool Euro gap you know, riding hips, and then, but he also mixes in some clean, smooth jibbing as well. You can really tell that snowboarding for like the longest amount of time was all about big air backcountry riding, and you know, jibbing was on the side. Like JP Walker's jibs in this video are nothing compared to his like big airs. But now it's kind of the opposite. Like a lot of people are way better at jibbing than big air. I think that's just because jibbing is like easier and more accessible to most people. But JP Walker with this cool part basically made jibbing cool. Forum, JP Walker have a large role in making jibbing sick. The modern jibbing movie, street snowboarding, anything that has to do with riding the streets is extremely core. Lastly, we have Bear, which is bringing the terrain parks into the scene. They made the first terrain parks in the 90s. The terrain park is extremely core. Oh, and of course we got snowboarding magazines. The first one was called the International Snowboard Mag. Torment, Slush, Snowboarder Mag. These are all great things for the snowboarding community, specifically for the core snowboarding community. So with all of these companies and all of these movies coming out and people like J.P. Walker, you have the idea that snowboarding is cool and you have the fact that snowboarding is art. I switch my ways to seize the day, to face my heart. Uh, snowboarding being popular is not kooky, but it's also not core. Uh, we would still be snowboarding today if it wasn't popular. You know, core snowboarding would still exist if it wasn't as large as it is today. Uh, the Olympics, it's snowboarding as a sport on the most massive scale possible. It's not kooky because the Olympics have done a lot of good things for snowboarding, but it's also not core. If the Olympics were not to exist, we would still have jibbing movies, we would still have awesome POW productions, we would still have snowboarding magazines, and we would still have a lot of the snowboard companies that we see today. The Olympics brings in a lot of people to snowboarding, which is an inherently good thing for core snowboarding and for snowboarding in general. All right, so that's, that's a lot of history. That's a lot of boring stuff. I just need to establish that in order to get into the, the meat and potatoes of this video, some more controversial takes. The first thing to go into kooky is the tripod snowboarding trick. Does that count as a trick? Oh no, God! No, God, please, no. no! The reason why I don't frick with this trick is because I have not seen a good tripod. Most tripods I see are at like three miles an hour. They just look weird, like your head's on the ground, your arms are just dragging. They definitely play their role in snowboarding. I'm glad they exist, but the tripod is simply a kooky trick. Let's do Instagram. Let's look at a like core snowboarding part versus an Instagram edit. A core part 
normally has so much like blood, sweat, and tears that go into it. They take months to film. It's snowboarders hucking themselves on dangerous obstacles. And an Instagram edit is just whatever that snowboarder happened to capture that day, you know, paired to some rap music behind it. <laughs> One takes a lot more effort and it is way more artistic than the other. Instagram is simply kooky. Next up, energy drinks. Are energy drinks core? No. Are they kooky? I don't think so either. I think they belong somewhere in the middle. Energy drinks do some good things for snowboarding. They have the budget to fund professional snowboarders and pay professional snowboarders handsomely. They also make really cool productions that are creative. So why are they not core? Energy drinks bandwagon off of the fact that snowboarding is a sport and that snowboarding is popular. Let's look at Ride Snowboards. I think Ride Snowboards is a, is a good example of a brand that came up in the 90s. They still exist today and they've always been core. They've always had that same market, which is people that are really passionate about snowboarding. And you can just see this by the aesthetic that they have on their Instagram. Uh, it's all just backcountry clips and street clips. There's not a lot of like goofy promotional items. Uh, it's just cool snowboarding. They make snowboarding look cool and they do it in an artistic way. Uh, like this is an amazing picture of Jed Anderson doing a down, flat up handrail. He hit the reverse Niger rail. <laughs> that is an epic Instagram comment. Ride has always been core and they probably always will be. All right, next up, we'll be looking at the 2022 Solomon Huck Knife. I'm only looking at the graphic. I'm not doing Solomon as a company. Let, let's take a look at this board. This board, might just be the ugliest snowboard I've ever seen. You have this weird black square with Solomon in Helvetica behind it. And then you have this stupid globe logo. And the colors of this board are blue and black with Helvetica as a font. That's the most corporate annoying thing I have ever seen. There's not a lot of creativity in this. This isn't making snowboarding look artistic or cool. I've been making this video in Google drawings and I can make the 2022 Solomon Huck Knife in Google Drawings as well. Uh, they put a stupid black square in the middle of the top sheet. Solomon in Helvetica, the most corporate font in the world. And then they took inspiration from the Chase Bank logo. Not, not the text though, of course. There we go. Blow it up a little bit. Put the Chase Bank logo in the center of your snowboard. When you look down on this, you're just depressed on the mountain. You're like, dang, I'm really riding the Chase Bank snowboard. I gotta pay my taxes. I shouldn't have called out of work today. I really gotta get back to my nine to five. And I believe that the 2022 Solomon Huckknife graphic has the capability to destroy snowboarding as we know it on a nuclear catastrophic asteroid sort of event. So that is a new category. That is above kooky. Uh, that's how ugly this board is. Next up, TikTok snowboarders. Hey, hey, hey. I'm on vacation every single day because I love my occupation. Hey. Next up, snowboard vlog format. The vlog format is kind of an insult to everything that was built in core snowboarding. The reason for this is because core snowboarders, pros, ams, whatever, they go out for the entire year in the streets, breaking their bones, doing death-defying stunts to try to come up with the 10 to 30 minute movie that they are really proud of. It has their favorite music, it is a production, there is effort behind it. It's a, it's a thing of beauty, if you will. A vlog just shits on this core uh, snowboarding style of video. When you film a vlog, you go out and you just record everything that happened in that day. You try to fill in that 10 minute mark. 
Uh, I just think vlogging isn't an art form. I still watch a lot of vlogs, and I do like vlogging snowboard YouTubers. I think there are vlogging snowboard YouTubers that are core, but I simply don't think the vlog format Think you can make a vlog cool. Uh, that's why vlog snowboarding is just kooky. Uh, there are vlog snowboarders that are core, and I still love watching snowboard vlogs. My channel has a lot of snowboard vlogs that are 10 times kookier than the kookiest of snowboard vlogs. This YouTube video and my channel in general, uh, extremely kooky. On the outskirts of kooky, my channel I don't think has the potential to destroy everything that we love about snowboarding, but it could. It, it could if I, uh, if I continue making videos like these. There's a lot of new people that are entering into snowboarding that aren't core snowboarding that don't know any of that. And exactly. those are the Which people is that not are their fault. on that. That's not their fault. Next up, we have the turtle ass pads. Putting a turtle on your ass or your dick or your knees to try to be safe is not cool. I don't think the sickest thing ever done in snowboarding if that dude was wearing a turtle on his ass, I don't think it would look cool. They have the ability to destroy everything that we love and hold dear about snowboarding as we know it. Next up, Dope Snow. Dope Snow, Dope Snow, Dope Snow. Probably the most hated brand in snowboarding right now. And I align with the haters. My main thing with Dope Snow is it is just like mass marketed totally to like normie people that don't snowboard like this video was designed for people that don't ski or snowboard most people that watch this the 300,000 people that did probably only go snowboarding like two or three times a year and they just bought their way into skiing and snowboarding by paying ridiculously talented athletes a lot of money to ride their really ugly clothes uh when you look at dope snow and you compare it to a company like ride Ride doesn't try to make videos to go viral. They make videos that core snowboarders would enjoy. Core snowboard companies create things for core snowboarders, for people that are extremely passionate about snowboarding. Don't Dope creates videos for people that don't care about snowboarding, that only snowboard like once or twice a year, that, you know, enjoy it, they think it's fun, but like they're not involved in the culture and they don't support core snowboarding. Uh, core snowboarders want to support, uh, you know, projects and companies that make things designed for core snowboarders. And Dope Snow simply doesn't do that. That's what the best way that I can explain it for now. And there, there are a lot of reasons to hate on Dope. You could just hate on Dope because when you pull up to the mountain, everybody's wearing it and it's stupidly popular and yeah, that's also a fun reason to hate on Dope. Uh, dope has the ability to destroy snowboarding and everything that we love about snowboarding as we know it. I'm going to make a long-term prediction here. I think in maybe five or ten years, uh, Dope's going to try to like slither its way into core snowboarding. They will eventually have a team of street riders and cool people wearing Dope. Uh, but I encourage you to remember how whack dope was in the past and to to stay away from them no matter how popular uh no matter how much they try to weasel their way into being into being cool because it's definitely going to happen dope snow just has way too much of a market share and too much money that they're gonna get their way into core snowboarding when it's going to be a dark day when when we eventually as snowboarders are like yeah you could come in buddy you, you can you can hang out here uh, that's just my prediction. Maybe we can stop it. Uh, maybe we can banish Dope uh, e even further away from the snowboard universe and, and even off this asteroid that could potentially destroy snowboarding as we know it. But Dope Industries is actually a really core uh, snowboarding brand. And everybody knows about Dope Snow, but uh, Dope Industries is definitely more niche. Uh, like, here you have a beautiful like pretty well thought out snowboard graphic. Uh, yeah, this is really nice. Their Instagram is cool. I, I like their style of it. I like the clothes that they make. 
I like the snowboarders that they support, and I like the art that they do and what they come up with. Uh, like, Dope Industries is completely core. It's really unfortunate that Dope Snow, like, is probably going to kill Dope Industries simply because of the name, but they make great films, core films, like Donkey Piss. These are the movies that I like watching before I go snowboarding. This is, like, what I like to fall asleep to. Just, like, sick films like this. They make films like Hiatus. Dope Industries, unlike Dope Snow, is extremely epic. Extremely core. Uh, support Dope Industries. We want to keep Dope Industries alive. It's really unfortunate that Dope Snow had to, had to ruin their rep, especially with, with their name. We're gonna do, uh, the Park Crew. Park Crew is epic. So thank your Park Crew. Thank them for being the most core people of all time. With the most core things and people of all time, we have your local snowboard shop or your local skate shop. Any place local that sells snowboards, do your best to support them and buy from these places. Next up, we're going to be looking at Beginners, Kooks, Jerry's. Uh, I'd say like 80% of the people that are on the mountain. Uh, because the, the core population of snowboarders is is not a lot. It, it's probably like 25 to 20%. Most other people on the mountain are casuals. Uh, they enjoy snowboarding. They think it's fun, but they don't like base their life around it. They're not invested in the culture. Core snowboarders, because we're such a small demographic, we support core brands, but we don't keep core companies in business. It's the Jerry's, it's the Kooks that do this because they are large in numbers. Uh, your average kook is probably going to have like a dope snow jacket, but they might also have a capita board or they might have union bindings. Uh, so they support kooky things and they support core things simply because they don't know better and they buy the majority of core products. If we were to remove the kooks and the casuals and the weekend warriors, we would, uh, uh snowboarding would be dead as we know it. Uh, all of your favorite companies would cease to exist because these guys are the economic backbone of snowboarding. So next time you see a kook or a casual wearing dope snow, but you also notice he has some 32 boots on, say, hey dude, you can improve, but we appreciate you. We appreciate you guys holding up the snowboarding universe. If there's one thing, one thing to get out of this video, it is this last assessment. Who is the most core snowboarder alive. Who is what you should aspire to be like in snowboarding? And that guy is Alex Peppino Stewart. He is the embodiment of a core snowboarder. Despite his Europeanness, we still love him as Americans. Europeans love him. He's great. He makes truly artistic movies and videos. And he's an amazing snowboarder. He's in the streets. Uh, if you want to learn more about why he's so core, just look up Rusty Toothbrush. Watch any one of those videos. They are the best things to come out every single year. Uh, yeah, that concludes what core snowboarding is. Uh, this is a goofy video. I'm going to enjoy editing this. This has been a fun thing to make, especially while my back has been in extreme pain. But I've been on some prescriptions. I've been feeling, feeling loose. Uh, the last couple of days, and I hope my back gets better soon so I can stop making uh, dumb snowboarding videos like this and actually go snowboarding again. If you agree or disagree, leave your comments below. I'm sorry I didn't do every single snowboard brand. The fact is most snowboard brands that you like are probably pretty core, and most of this video has just been like, this is core, this is core, this is core. So uh, that would have been pretty, uh, pretty boring. Anyways, leave your comments below. What do you think makes core snowboarding? Have a good, good rest of your weekend. Or go, just go snowboarding, dog. Uh.